guys and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Uche and if this is your first time on this channel and you're not subscribed yet please click on the subscribe button below so you get notified whenever I post a new video and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for tuning to this channel I hope you're having fun with the content that I'm posting on this channel and I also hope it inspires you to pick up some books and read so guys in this video I'm going to be reviewing an African classic six 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 <laughs> the book i'm going to be reviewing in this video is a furu by flora mapa guys this book was published in 1966 anybody watching this that was born in 1966 so flora mapa is the first african woman to be published guys that's a huge feat and um, she's referred to as the mother of um, modern African literature and Efuru was um, her first book here. This book tells the story of Efuru just as the title of the book says and um, Efuru is said to be um, a very beautiful woman from a wealthy family who fell in love with this young man Adizwa. Against her father's wishes, she became um, Adizwa's wife even though he was yet to pay her bride price. So um, she didn't get her father's blessings before she became Adizwa's wife. But um, she was so much in love with Adizwa, they were so much in love with each other and you know she became his wife and she was very industrious. Adizwa is a farmer but uh, it was hard for him to stay in the farm because he was always running back to be with his beautiful wife. Efuru. So uh, as the marriage continued, then over time Efuru and her husband they gathered money and Adiza was able to pay her a bright price and you know she got her father's blessing. But um Efuru had an issue, she was unable to conceive quickly. You know, there are some women that will get married in the first six months or three months, they're already pregnant, but it was very hard for Efuru to um, conceive. But finally, um she did conceive uh, that was after her father took her to one um Dibia. So she was able to conceive and she gave birth to a girl, a gunning. But um, unfortunately, the child didn't live long. The child died, I think, like after a year or so. And uh, Efuru and her husband, they were living in peace, you know, they were doing business together, they were traders, and they were actually getting money from it. But um, along the line, um, Adizwa left her. So she was living with Adizwa and her mother-in-law in the same house and her mother-in-law loved her so much but Adizwa left her and you know he went to another village to settle with another woman and Efuru was heartbroken. She was there waiting but at the point when she couldn't wait any longer she uh, went back to her father's house and she got married to um, another person. She got married to another man that her second husband Enneberi and they loved each other too. The marriage was blissful at first, but um, the issue of um, conceiving. After her child died, she was unable to conceive again. So um, it was at this point that uh, this statement that says, It is only a bad woman who wants to have a man all to herself. So this statement just goes through the, um, the whole length of this book. So in Ephraim's time in this book, Polygamy is something that should be embraced by a woman with open arms, especially if she has not given birth. So if she has given birth, okay, there might be a little disparity. So for a second husband, a second wife was married for him and that one was able to give birth to a son. But there was a time when Efru became very sick and based on superstition, um, everybody was already saying that oh she had committed adultery and that was why she was sick. So she needed to confess for her to be relieved of the sickness and Ephraim did not commit any adultery. So it was just crazy and she almost died but for her doctor friend who um, who came and you know treated her and it was at this point that she left her second husband. So generally um, Ephraim was very unlucky with men and even there was a time my second husband it was as if he was nowhere to be found he didn't come home for um for months but they were able to hear rumors and stories and it happened that her husband was in jail as at the time when he was not available in the house if you want to know more about the Igbo culture i would say this book is just your go-to book because 
it's very rich in the Igbo culture. There are so many things about the Igbo culture that are discussed in this book, that are incorporated in this book and it really was very educative. And the time when this book was set was during the um, colonial era. So um, one of the themes of this book is colonization and white supremacy. Because we see that there, the colonial masters, they were arresting people who were selling the homemade gin and um, they wanted uh, the Igbo people to patronize their own gene, that is their own foreign gene. But it was hard to patronize them because this gene was sold at a higher price than the locally made gene. So another thing is that the author employed the use of folk tales. So um, oral tradition is something that is number one when it comes to um, the African culture. There are so many stories that are passed down through oral tradition and these stories are meant to be didactic because it teaches a lesson. So there's the story of um, the young girl who disobeyed her mother and due to her disobedience, a spirit came to marry her. So that kind of story, those are um, folk tales that we grew up listening to, I was number one when it comes to listening to folk tales. I just, <laughs> my uncle will stay with us. Ah. He was always telling me stories and even the first time when I went to my village, I think I was about six or seven, seven years old, I was so excited because I knew that, okay, since it was the village, folk tales, all these stories was going to be very, very easy to come across. Like, people had more time in the village to tell stories, especially in the evening. These tales by moonlight thing, yes, this is where it originates from. So when it comes to the Igbo culture, we also see that before a girl is recommended to um, get married or if a man comes to say, okay, I want to get married to this girl, her family members, they look at the family. His family members will look at the girl's family. So if there's anything like sickness in the family or if it's known that in their lineage, there's madness, there's sickness or there was a murderer or um, there was a... Um, an adulteress or an adulterer in that family is going to be hard for that marriage to pull through. So when it comes to marriage, people just look at these things. And I feel it's not just for the Igbo culture because I've had the um, opportunity of um, knowing about other cultures that we have in Nigeria. So I feel this is an African thing. So um, this book also talks about the communal life in the Igbo culture. So the setting that we are given in this book Everybody just does their thing together. They are in each other's business, almost like they see themselves as family. So um, it's very, very easy for news to spread fast. In fact, there's no hiding place for news. Like something will happen in your family and it's even possible your neighbor will know before you get to know. So we just um, see this communal living in um, the Igbo community. There is a point in the book where um, Efuru begins to have dreams about um, a river goddess. So this river goddess is called Uhamiri and when she relates this to her father, a chief priest was brought and it was decided that she was going to be um, a worshipper of this goddess. But this goddess doesn't give children. The goddess gives riches, gives you wealth, but she doesn't give children. So I would say maybe this was um, one of the reasons why Efru was unable to conceive because even her mother had only her and um, her mother used to have dreams about this who are married so maybe it's something in their line or something like that so um true the main thing that um this book projects is uh, i would say is that Efru, when it came to men Efru was unlucky even though she was very very beautiful i mean she was selfless hardworking, caring loving and her husbands were just very selfish to her and uh, i just wasn't uh, you know satisfied that if we didn't really win at the end because you know she had to leave her husband and you know she didn't have any child by herself her father died you know that kind of thing so towards the end of the book there was this talk about um, her husband Enneberry being jailed so i was expecting that we are going to know why he was jailed in the first place because you know there was this force about why he was jailed and i was thinking that okay the um the story was going to come out but the book ended and i still did not know why enneberry was jailed in the very first place so i felt the book ended abruptly at that point because there was no closure for me <laughs> there was no closure for me as um, i completed this book so this book is quite unlike any classic that i've read because it leaves you um asking for more. There are questions that are left unanswered. I really wanted to know why Enneberry was jailed in the very first place. What was the crime that he committed that he had to be jailed for? 
generally the book um at some point the book dragged it felt like i was being dragged in uh, different directions although it was hard to tell where the story was heading to we just know that okay we are reading about the life of Ifu. But overall, it's a very nice book because um, it describes um, life in the olden times. And I remember at the point when um, I was reading this book, you know, I had people sending me DMs saying, oh, they had read this book while they were very young. And some say it, it wasn't very interesting. They weren't so excited about reading the, the book because it was a recommended text for them and they could not finish it. But I mean, the book dragged at some point. But it's not so bad for a first publication i would say the book did really well seeing that it's the first attempt i would say the author tried the author really did good and um this book yeah i think you should read it if you are interested in knowing about the Igbo culture i feel this book will educate you more on that and um that's just basically it about this book do i like the book yes i like the book mm. i'm not going to be reading it but the book is it's cool it wasn't over the top with excitement but it was okay it was okay it wasn't so bad it's, it's not as bad as some people had projected it to be so I, I had a good time reading the book it was okay so that's just it about the book um thank you for watching please don't forget to like this video share this video with your friends leave a comment in the comment section below and um subscribe i'll be seeing you in my very next video bye guys